Our next honoree is also incredibly special and a titan. Mark Richter's remarkable television career has spanned four decades of transitions from analog to digital TV, from standard def to high def to I don't know how many defs to 4K and now next-gen TV. He is President Emeritus of the Advanced Television Systems Committee, something known as ATSC. It's the group that develops international standards best known for pioneering HD TV and digital broadcasting. Literally, television would not be what it is without Mark. In addition to leading ATSC for 20 of its 30 years, Mark's noteworthy industry contributions include his pioneering development of closed captioning in 1980. Somebody had to develop that. And his key role in the 1990s of overseeing technical evaluations for the world's first digital TV broadcast standard. The capstone of his career is the new ATSC 3.0 Next Gen TV standard developed under his leadership. It marries broadcast and broadband for the first time and truly represents the future of television, our future. It's poised to roll out across the nation in 2020 and beyond. This incredible new standard is getting a fitting legacy for this giant of broadcasting. Mark. Wow, this is great. I feel like I'm having another bar mitzvah. <laughs> you can take your checks and bonds and put them in an envelope and pass them to my wife at table six. <laughs> I also want to recognize Neil Shapiro. I, I don't know Neil Shapiro, but uh, cl clearly he's important. I want, seriously, I want to thank the Library of American Broadcasting Foundation and the IRTS Foundation for this great honor. Also, congratulations to my fellow inductees. When I first learned that I would be inducted into the giants of broadcasting, I was overwhelmed. Looking at the ro roster of past inductees is a humbling experience. All remarkable contributors to our industry. Now, I spent my career on the technical side of the business, so it's especially humbling for me to be on a list that includes Lee DeForest, Alan Dumont, Philo T. Farnsworth, the commander Eugene McDonald, David Sarnoff, Vladimir Swirkin, and my friends and colleagues Dick Wiley, Wu Paik, and the late Joe Flaherty. I retired this past May to focus on the health challenges of Parkinson's disease. I spent some of my time working on my left hook and right jab in a boxing class designed for people with Parkinson's. I've also had time to reflect on my career. One thing I know for certain, I didn't get here on my own. As Mark Twain said, the self-made man is as likely as the self-laid egg. I have been truly fortunate in my career to work for and with so many great people. I can't possibly thank them all, but I would like to mention a few of the individuals and organizations that have played, played a pivotal role. I started at the Instructional Television Studio of the National Technical Institute for the Deaf. NTID was a test site for a PBS-managed innovation called closed captioning. I moved on to WROC in Rochester where I did everything from working the graveyard shift, editing commercial reels, two inch quad tape for the next day and to, to, to the technical director of the local news. I'm thankful, thankful for these opportunities early in my career. In 1979, I was hired by the late David Silman to work at PBS on the development of the Line 21 closed captioning system. Dave shared his technical knowledge and everyday wisdom. But most importantly, Dave fixed me up on a blind date with Diane, my wonderful life of 29 years. As my shaking increases, she remains rock steady. Diane and I are blessed with two extraordinary children. Madeline is a high school student in the South Bronx, and Ben is working on the development of autonomous vehicles at Ford Motor Company. Diane and I are incredibly proud of them, not only for their achievements, but for, for the dedication to repairing the world. During my 16 plus years at PBS, I worked on a lot of innovative projects with a lot of talented people. It's possible for me, it, it's impossible for me to adequately express my gratitude to PBS and the public television community for their support. And while I was at PBS, I participated in a number of industry activities, including the FCC Advisory Committee on Advanced Television Service, 
The advisory committee was tasked with selecting the next U.S. broadcasting system. Being somewhat naive, I agreed to chair the working group responsible for system testing. Because of the efforts of hundreds of the world's best technical experts, the industry designed, tested, documented, and deployed the first digital broadcasting system in the world. For me, for me that was an experience. The experience was a gift for which I would thank the system proponents and later the Grand Alliance and the test laboratories. Special thanks to the advisory committee chairman, Dick Wiley. The, the chairman Wiley occasionally said to me, Mark, I hope you know what you're doing. He always ended the conversation with, I'm behind you 100%. Thank you, Dick, for the experience of a lifetime. I guess I was hooked on industry, co industry collaboration and standards development. So I joined the Advanced Television Systems Committee in 1996. On Christmas Eve of that year, the FCC adopted the DTV standard, ushering in the era of digital broadcasting, including HDTV, multicasting, and electronic program guides. ATSC continued refinement of the digital television standard, developed supplementary standards, and recommended practices and implementation strategies. But as we looked at the amazing transformation in consumer viewing habits made possible by the internet, it became obvious that some, simply adding on to a 20-year-old standard would not be a long-term strategy. Broadcasting, like all industries, must continually evolve and advance. Our most recent work, ATSC 3.0, is the culmination of a six-year standard development effort to rethink the over-the-air broadcast television services in the internet age. ATSC 3.0 is to be known as NextGen TV. It's the world's first broadcast standard built on internet protocol backbone, providing broadcasters with remarkable flexibility and new market opportunities to deliver ultra HD TV, immersive audio, mobile and interactive services with new audience measurement tools. ATSC 3.0 is a result of a collaborative effort of hundreds of talented individuals and innovative companies from around the world. Development of technical standards is truly a team sport. My sincere thanks go to, go to all the members of ATSE, and special thanks to the current and former members and chairs of the board of directors, including the brilliant Glenn Reitmeyer and Lynn Claudy, who are here with us today. Thanks to my friend John Taylor, Velji, for his extraordinary dedication and support. I also want to thank the ATSC staff members, Lindsay Shelton Gross, Dara Bruno, and Jerry Whitaker. And a special thank out to my second, special shout out to my second favorite Madeline, Madeline, Madeline in the world, Madeline Nolan, the new president of ATSC. I know that, that ATSC has a very bright future under Madeline's leadership. Once again, I want to thank you for this truly great honor. I'm not a giant but I know I've been fortunate to stand on the shoulders of giants. Thank you very much.